Order, um, members, item five in the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the assembly do now adjourn, and in conjunction with the business committee, I have given leave to Mr. Colin McGrath uh, to raise the matter of the proposed closure of outdoor education centres in South Down. The proposer of the topic will have up to 15 minutes. I call Mr. Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to lead in this important adjournment debate. I approach this debate from an interesting position. I have been an avid user of outdoor education centres over the past 25 years as a young person, a student youth worker, and as a full-time youth worker. In fact, I have stayed at two of the four centres that are due to close in the past, and I have stayed in one of them on many, many occasions. I have brought groups of young people to the centres and can detail uh, to you, Minister, the roles, the purpose, the benefit of them and also the absolute loss and tragedy there will be if they are to shut. But from the onset, I must seek clarification for something. You had mentioned to us two weeks ago in the House, Minister, during question time that the reason for the rationalisation was due to financial pressures. Yet, at the presentation to the Education Committee Wednesday week ago, the Education Authority said that the reason for the closures was to rationalise and provide an enhanced and better service and that all of the money that would be saved would be pumped back into the same centres. And I do think we need to have that clarified because if it is the latter, I think we can put a good case to you to try and overturn uh, the, the consultation process. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, why do we have outdoor centres? Well, they are hubs. They are a space for young people to come together to learn and to do so in an experiential way. They learn important life skills, teamwork skills, communication skills, and much, much more. They use the methodology of the outdoors and action activities such as mountaineering, hill walking, canoeing, sailing, bouldering, abseiling, nightlines, and other outdoor pursuits to educate. It's exciting for children, it's thrilling for teenagers, and it is a delight for the youth worker and the teacher to use this medium to educate young people, especially those that do not often excel in the academic setting, and that is invaluable for them. Outdoor centres and outdoor education are an essential and integral element of our education system, and one, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that many in the world are jealous of. Now, I can vouch for this because I have brought groups to them from Louth, Kerry, Cork, Scotland, France, Hungary and Finland, and we have stayed in these centres. They have facilitated our young people to host guests from far and wide, to make friends and share cultures, but more importantly, they have helped our young people to open their minds and stretch their personal horizons far and wide as well. Why, oh why, would we cut back on this and reduce our capacity? I want to turn as well to the consultation, and I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, I am disgusted that once again we have a consultation Northern Ireland style, and that's one where the proposed outcomes are included in the introductory paperwork. That is a joke. That is a humiliation to the good people of Northern Ireland and makes a farce of the consultation process. But I do want to highlight a couple of elements of the consultation and the flaws that I see to help the Minister to take this decision that we would like. In terms of occupancy rates, there is some concern about the way that these figures have been calculated and used in the document. The occupancy rate that all centres are benchmarked against are those similar in the hotel industry. Now, the hotel industry is a highly competitive industry that achieves big profits when it gets a high occupancy rate of around 75%. At that level, it is doing very well and it is able to deliver profits for the owners. But there is no such need for profits within the outdoor industry. Covering the costs, breaking even, would be perfectly acceptable when it comes to profits, and therefore to benchmark them against the Savoy or the Europa is unfair and a little bit crass. When benchmarked against all other outdoor education centres in the rest of the UK, the centres are, that are proposed to close compare very favourably indeed. The building status. This is another fallacy that's trotted out in this document. The building survey that has been completed isn't just the essential and urgent work that is required, but rather a list of what could be done to the buildings, which includes some urgent remedial work. 
So let me compare that, Mr Deputy Speaker, to a holiday. I could go to Barbados and the Caribbean for my holiday, but I'll probably only be able to afford somewhere in Europe. And if I'm lucky, I might be able to add a couple of weekends here and there, maybe even in North Down. But you see, that's where the difference is. It's the difference between what we can do, what we would like to do, and what one actually does. But to use that as a factor is a little bit unfair, especially whenever it results in one centre being picked over another for closure. There is also a glaring inconsistency in the figures in the document used to calculate the rank order of those centres that are to be closed. In the review document supplied to us, the order has Shannockmore listed as third, Killalay listed as fourth, and Bushmills as fifth, Ardnabannon sixth. Yet in the evidence document, Bushmills is third, Shannockmore fourth, and Killalay and Ardnabannon are joint sixth. Now, this decision will see people lose their jobs having to relocate, villages having the heart ripped out of them, and a lifetime impact on our youth. Are you prepared, Minister, to allow such a consultation to proceed with such schoolboy errors in such an important document? I can hear the judicial reviews being warmed up from here. And I worry too, Minister, about the fact that this decision, with all of its enormity and impact, its employment consequences and the emotions that are stirred, is being delivered by an interim head of youth service who will report through to an interim chief executive. Is it fair, Minister, that you want these momentous decisions to be taken by people in interim roles? If it all goes wrong, it could maybe even see your own position being interim too. The review has been carried out, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, as a response to the priorities for youth document of a few years ago. It stated, and, and I quote, this will include a review of the youth service estate and outdoor education centres. And outdoor education centres, not merely outdoor education centres. One would have thought that the review of the youth service estate and outdoor education centres would be undertaken in a complementary manner, not picking one sector and then doing the other. Because what if the rationalisation in the youth service estate in that consultation, it might save money, which then could be pumped into the outdoor education uh, sector. Uh, why has it been done in such a disjointed manner? We, we have to get uh, answers to those questions. But I'm going to conclude, Mr Speaker, and to the Minister I would call. You have the power to intervene here. You have the capacity to stop this massacre of our outdoor education centres. It's too early in the lifetime of the Education Authority for this decision to be taken. It's been taken for all the wrong reasons. Our children will have fun in these places. They will learn. They will gain new skills. They will make uh, long and lasting friendships. They will break down barriers and help to develop our country. They will be the leaders of tomorrow, and we owe them the opportunity to learn the skills that they need. Let's not cut the provision and make our outdoor education centres the preserve of the chosen few, but rather a luxury that we can offer to many. I plead to you, Minister, please keep all of our outdoor education centres open. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Um, can I indicate that uh, there is substantial interest in this debate um, as an adjournment debate, and we have a number of members indicating their intentions to speak. I propose, therefore, to give four minutes to members for this specific constituency uh, and they will be called first and then three minutes for the others. I call Katrina Ruan. Thank you uh, Mr Deputy Speaker and I have to say um, I support outdoor pursuit centres, outdoor education centres. I remember many many moons ago when I trained myself as an outdoor education facilitator in Ackill Island Outdoor Pursuit Centre, which is funded by the education system. And I have some of the best memories of those times. And that centre is still open and still funded by the education system. Um, Killowen and Ardnabannon are vital assets to the South Down community. Killowen has been opened since 1982 at its current site, providing outdoor activities on Carlingford Lock and the adjacent forest parks. Ardnabannon opened in 1967 and provided a large range of outdoor activities to the youth of Southdown and further afield. 
I met with representatives from Cologne last week to discuss the proposed closures and to offer my full support in these centres staying open. They told me how centres like Cologne, Ardnaban and indeed Delamont, and I know there are other centres throughout the north, not only keep young people active, but also help with mental health, we have an obesity crisis, and also academic achievements. And while I'm on the subject, and I hope the Deputy Speaker will indulge me slightly, um, I note today that our primary school children are sixth in the world in maths. And I do want to pay tribute, that is phenomenal. And I do want to pay tribute to the primary schools, their teachers, the staff, parents, and indeed successive education ministers who brought in literacy and numeracy policies, including myself and John O'Dowd. But I think it is to be celebrated. And I know in, during uh, difficult budgetary times, um, it is important to focus where money should be focused. And that's why I am asking the minister to really think carefully about cutting money and closing um, centres like these because they do contribute to academic as well as physical uh, education. I visited both the centres that I'm talking about here in my own constituency as Minister for Education. I funded both of these centres and continued to fund them during my time. I saw firsthand the good work that they're doing. Um, I offer my full support for both centres remaining open and I do believe that this minister has an open mind and I hope that rather than listen to officials or people who want to cost cut, and I'm not saying all officials want to cost cut, that he takes his own mind, <laughs> that he takes his own mind in relation to this. The, min the minister has a substantial budget. I know he's pointing at the Minister for Finance, uh, but that, uh, the minister has a substantial budget and money should be found within his budget to fund these rather than passing the buck. Um, and I'm sure the current minister wouldn't do that. But I do plead with him to continue uh, to fund these centres because they provide such an important facility for people right across the island, as my colleague, constituency colleague Colin McGrath has uh, talked about. Um, I know my own family have attended uh, the centres and their classmates from both sides of the border have really appreciated the facilities that it offers. So, I would please ask the Minister um, to support these centres. It's a small saving, saving, a little over a million pound saving when you take in the money that the centres bring in themselves. I don't think it's fair that we should ask them to be totally self-sufficient. Ask the member to conclude her remarks. And I would ask you, please, keep them open. Thank you. I call Harold McKee. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Sp as one who resides in a rural community in South Down, I very often take for granted the beauty of the countryside, the moored mountains, the coastal waters of Carlingford and Strangford Locks. It is with this in mind, Mr. Speaker, that I am really concerned for many young people who enjoy going to the outdoor education centres of Ardabanan, Delamont and Cologne. It seems to me that proposals such as this to close down three centres in South Down catering to young people across Northern Ireland should be justified by a report showing systemic failures to deliver objectives, perhaps health and safety issues and so on. We have seen no such finding in this report that I would seriously question and indeed oppose the proposals being put forward by the Minister in this case. When I read the findings of this review, I cannot see any justification for the rationalisation of larger statutory centres. In fact, I can only see reason to preserve, support and promote the services, as I am sure that many young people in Northern Ireland do not have the opportunity to visit one of these centres with school or through a youth group. Indeed, as the report shows, there is capacity in both statutory and voluntary sectors for more young people to experience and benefit from the services of outdoor centres. In the majority of performance statistics, statutory centres rate equal or higher than the voluntary sectors. The report states that throughout the review it was apparent that residential and outdoor education is highly valued by all those who use the service with regard to the quality of provision, the overall outdoor experience, the calibre and experience of staff and its value for money. The review also states that ETI assessments over the last five years have ranged from satisfactory to outstanding 
and that outdoor education brings added value to both the formal and non-formal education spheres. There is not even a mention of the saving to be made in the report, but with a total budget of 0.15% of the Department's education budget, I believe the advantages of outdoor education centres far outweigh the costs. Should these centres be closed at a greater cost to the young participants who have availed of the OECs? Should it be education and environment, conservation, adventure, outdoor recreation, which includes climbing, orienteering, abseiling, sailing, canoeing, mountain biking, rock climbing, etc. But most important, it is a physical exercise of the child's health and well-being. I refer to a quote in the review paper of Edwin Lappin in 2000. Outdoor education enables students and teachers to interact in an environment free from the limitations of the classroom. The review states that there is a clutter of OECs at the southern coast. Where else would you locate OECs when you have a natural environment with the Mourne Mountains in an area of outstanding natural beauty and the lochs of Carningford and Strangford? Ardnabannon, Delamont and Cologne is seen as an invaluable front line service by geography and science teachers, helping to cover the requirements of the GCSE and A-level specifications and also used by the students studying a range of vocational courses. Many have also gone on to gain their Duke of Edinburgh awards. If this proposal closure goes ahead with a loss of 191 bed residential outdoor education centres, there is no way that the voluntary sector will be able to address the shortfall. Mr Speaker, I call on the Education Minister to reverse his proposal and allow the school children and community groups to continue in the outdoor activities in Ardnabannon, Delamont and Cologne outdoor education centres. Thank you. I call Sinead Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I firstly want to thank my South Down colleague, Colin McGrath, for bringing this to the floor of the Chamber this evening, and the Minister for being in attendance, which is critical uh, to the debate moving forward. No doubt, through many submissions, the Minister will have been made aware of the strong reasons that surround the need to keep these centres open. And indeed, in the last uh, week or two, I have had the opportunity to visit Cologne Centre, which was purpose built, and I put on record my support for the retention of that centre, along with the other two centres in South Down, which I believe equally offer uh, good service. But the, the, the arguments that have been made um, are largely self-evident in that you protect jobs. You continue to offer enriched um, educational experiences beyond the classroom. And I would ask the Minister to take note of the fact that some children who visit these outdoor centres for the very first time in their lives may excel. This is an opportunity where they break away from the confines of the classroom and they find out that actually they're particularly good at something that they would otherwise never have had the opportunity to be introduced to. Those children have a confidence built within them on events such as visits to this outdoor educational centre and that stays with them for life. How do we measure that, Minister? How can we make a judgment on whether that is going to sit well with a balance, a balance sheet. I will give way. But the member also uh, notes the, the, the benefits that the teachers and the headmasters and headmistresses are aware of, of the, impact of, the, the positive impact of visiting Cologne makes on, on the development of their kids, like Anna Shields of Annamar Primary School in South Armagh, who's been going every year for the last 20 years and is devastated at the potential closure of, of Cologne. I take your Thank you. I take your point. But I would ask the Minister at this stage to simply pause. Pause and take note of what is being presented here today. These are very positive, popular centres for good reason. We also have had the issue raised about health, obesity, outdoors pursuits, things that really the whole programme for government clearly reflect and keep making reference to. Proposals to close these centres contradict everything that the programme for government as it is being built represent or claim to represent. The contradiction there is so wide that it cannot sit comfortably with the Minister and I urge him in that vein to sit down and compare the proposals or the, the possibility of the proposals against what are the objectives of this executive. The information in the public domain to date, I have to say, does not fill me with confidence, Minister, that that work has even 
been undertaken, and I would urge you to, to consider it. And I will put it to the minister again. How do we measure? How do we measure the added confidence that those young people get from visiting these centres? How do we measure that personal development that takes place when some young children, perhaps for the very first time, are staying away from their parents? I know that some of the leaders in the centres it was made reference to have the skills and the ability to deal with that very delicate homesickness. They, they learn to network with their friends. And it's so difficult to really put a value on that. And how do we measure the spirit the community spirit that is engendered by the young people who step up to do courses and volunteer. They take that far beyond the centres through their life where they carry that community spirit with them and they really bring such social added value that we cannot measure. And if anything comes out of this debate today, and I truly hope that the Minister has come here with an open mind, I would ask the Minister to consider this. Would the minister facilitate a meeting with representatives from the sector to discuss the review? I'm not referring to adding to the review. I'm asking him to sit and look at the review, how it was constructed, the faults that lie within it, and is the minister then perhaps willing to consider that just maybe we should be at least pushing the pause button? I ask the minister to please consider these centres, please consider all the social value that you will never see presented to you from officials in the form of a balance sheet. And I urge the Minister to take on board our request here this evening. And I thank you very much for being in attendance. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. Um, that completes contributions from constituency members. Uh, I'm now prepared to grant the non-constituency members who have indicated an additional minute. They will now each have up to four minutes. I call William Humphrey. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the um, member for Southdown for bringing the motion before the House this evening and, and to the Minister for his attendance. Uh, as someone involved in youth work and I declare an interest as a, a member of the Scout Association, I have to say that I've been to many of these outdoor centres uh, and I've seen in first hand the absolute improvement that there is in young people in their personal development whenever they attend these centres. That is hugely important and cannot ever be, be quantified by economists looking at the bottom line in any uh, consultation, any review or any piece of work in terms of discussing and deciding on whether these centres should be retained or closed. I do have to take issue with, with, with two things. Uh, the, the member for, for Southdown, Mr Rand, <coughs> said that the minister should retain an open mind. But, uh, and I have to say that I have spoken to the minister and the minister very clearly has an open mind around this issue. I also have to say that uh, Mr McKee in his contribution said the Minister's proposals. I think it's important that people remember, and I hope the Ulster Youth Party were not scoring points, these are not the Minister's proposals. These are the Education Authority's proposals. These proposals are proposals, the consultation that, that, and the review that it came out of was the Education Authority's uh, consultation and review. So these proposals are the Education Authority, so people need to get that absolutely clear. Uh, I will do, sure. The member also be aware that on that particular board there are political representatives, which also includes the Ulster Unionist Party. I, I just take my I've got with some of progress. You did have your opportunity. Member, in, in has terms, an extra minute. I would, I would simply make the point that having been to Cologne, Arden, and Delamont, uh, having been to Bushmills, I would say uh, over the years I am absolutely aware of the facilities that they uh, uh, provide. In fact, I first visited Cologne way back in 1989 when there was a huge scout camp uh, at Gosford. And I was there last year with the uh, decal committee when we visited, and the facilities are excellent. And I understand absolutely the close proximity that these centres have to the coastline and, the, and, and when their kids are doing water activities and when they're going into, into the morns and learn new skills in the morns, that's hugely important. So it, for the minister, clearly, it is a case of uh, going and speaking to the Education Authority, which I'm sure he has done, and will continue to do because it's about conflicting demands on budget and budget is not infinite and so the reality is that what we what we must do here is we must always put the young people first i say that as a board of governor in two schools it is about the development of our young people and so when our young people have the opportunity to go away 
and their leaders, or in this case their teachers perhaps, have, have the opportunity to see them in that context of, of, a, of an outdoor uh, uh, centre or an outward bound centre and the, the activities that young people uh, are involved in, then there is a monumental change around that. But it is about sweating the assets as well, and we need to be realistic too, because the, the, the department also fund other centres such as Crawford's Burn Guide Centre, and the minister recently opened a new uh, cabin uh, and chalet at Crawford's Burn. We have all other great centres in, 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 in North Down, like Lauren Guide Centre and the BB Centre at Ganaway. So I have to just stress again to the House and to members, get the facts absolutely clear. I know the minister, I know the minister, and I have known him a long time. The minister is absolutely committed to delivering for young people in our community. But this was a piece of work that was initiated out of a review that came from the Education Authority, the consultation is the Education Authority's consultation, and these proposals are the Education Authority's proposals. So I have to say, I have no doubt the Minister will be sympathetic. It's up to the Minister to respond to this debate in the, in the, in the way that I have no doubt he will. But I would equally say that members need to be fair and not place undue criticism on the, on, on the Minister. I mean, it is criticism that is not and should not be directed to, to his office. Happy to give away. Could the member, um, thank, I thank you for giving way. Could the member then clarify, in the interest of having that detail correct, the Education Authority's review suggested that this was not a monetary decision. This was about a review of service. Mr. Mr. Uh, Story made a, a contribution and an intervention, and made it, made it very clear that uh, there are political representatives that said in the Education Authority, "I'm not one of those people." I am not and haven't, been, haven't had the opportunity to be privy to, to the, the, the report and the review. I'm sure the member has party colleagues who do. Perhaps the member could ask them. Mr. Speaker, I would, Deputy Speaker, I would draw my remarks to a conclusion, uh, but I would just simply say that members should bear in mind what are the facts around this issue and not deal with fantasy. Thank you. Thank you. I call uh, Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to speak in support of the valuable contribution made by outdoor education centres and their staff to the development of our children and young people across Northern Ireland, and specifically those located in South Down. Mr Deputy Speaker, when we think of education, understandably, we think of schools, <coughs> excuse me, given the central role that they play. However, we must also acknowledge that education ought to take many forms and include the vital contribution the youth service and outdoor education make. Outdoor education provision accounts for only a small portion of the overall education budget, but it provides unique learning opportunities and skills development for around 150,000 children and young people every year, approximately as many pupils that attend all our post-primary schools put together. Residential and outdoor education centres across Northern Ireland provide a wide range of positive education experiences and opportunities. Opportunities to develop interpersonal and practical skills, teamwork and communication skills, social and emotional resilience through a wide range of physical activities that all aid our children and young people's ability to achieve a positive future for themselves and contribute to their community. This has been supported by the correspondence I have received from primary and post-primary schools in my own constituency of East Belfast regarding just how valuable the outdoor education centres at Delamont, Ardnabannon and Killowen in South Down are to them. The Education Minister and the Education Authority must therefore ensure that all children and young people do have the opportunity to participate in all forms of education, including youth services and outdoor education. As Deputy Chairperson of the Assembly Education Committee, I was glad to support our decision to invite the Education Authority to update us on its approach to this matter. The Education Authority cited over-provision, duplication, economic viability and failure to meet delivery models as reasons for the proposed closures. However, I must say that serious questions were raised by all parties about the reasons that the Education Authority has given for the proposed closures of the outdoor education centres. And there is clear concern that this exercise is more about cost cutting than improving education provision for children and young people in our community. 
I have consulted with South Down Alliance elected representative, Councillor Patrick Brown, in the Newry Morning Down District Council, who would also question this approach taken by the Education Authority on the proposed rationalisation of the centres and indeed oppose the closure of the three centres in the South Down constituency. There is shock that some of the busiest, largest and most popular centres are being proposed for closure. Centres that are consistently busy throughout the year, during and out of term time. Centres that accommodate both school and youth groups from across Northern Ireland. And centres that bring children and young people from across our community in exciting outdoor shared spaces vital to the aim of building a united community in Northern Ireland. There should be no surprise, given its natural resources, that the South Down Moorn area has a concentration of outdoor residential centres. However, the proposed cuts will reduce the number of bed spaces and opportunities available for children and young people to experience outdoor residential throughout Northern Ireland. Thank you. Thank you. I call Carla Lockhart. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the proposer of the motion uh, for bringing this to the floor of the Chamber this evening. And also I want to commend uh, the large number that have turned out in force, obviously demonstrating to us uh, the, the depth of feeling that there is amongst the community on this very important issue. Can I also thank the Minister for taking uh, time to come and to listen to the debate and obviously he will uh, make his comments in due course. Um, I also want just at the very outset uh, to say about the invaluable service that, that these uh, outdoor centres have given to our society and to our constituents and to our young people. Um, I can think back to my time uh, at school whenever I attended some of the centres myself, and it's not that terribly uh, long ago, but it feels, uh, it feels like maybe a little bit longer than, than, than what it is. Um, I have to say that they are a fantastic facility and they do uh, certainly give a, a real added uh, benefit to a child's uh, overall uh, growth and social skills. There is no doubt that they have a positive impact on their communication skills, their leadership skills, their team working skills their ability to experience the real outdoors. And for many who maybe are from a, a town setting, uh, it, it often is uh, potentially the only time that they will have access to that real uh, outdoor experience. So I want to commend the many workers that have uh, throughout the years had that impact on children and young people who have used this service. I have to say that when we received the briefing from the EA at the Education Committee, I was uh, somewhat uh, shocked at some of the, the revelations that, that the EA did uh, come forward with. And, and I think it is important, and my, my colleague uh, William Humphrey made this very point, this is an EA consultation and it is an EA uh, recommendation. And I think we have to be aware that, that the EA have arrived at this uh, consultation stage. I think it's really... Uh, yeah. I thank the member very much for taking intervention. Um, and I absolutely accept the uh, Education Authority made this decision. But will the member agree with me that it is the minister who will make the final decision? Members I'm certainly uh, not take any lectures from the member across the, 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 the way, because when she was minister, um, the unfortunate thing is that the, the SEL, the Education and Library Boards didn't actually tackle the problem and the underusage. So, you know, I'll not, I'll not take any, any lectures fr from her. Our minister is compassionate about our young people, and I have no doubt that he will do everything in his power to ensure that young people get the very best education and outdoor experience uh, in, his, uh, in his term in office. But I do go back to the fact that you know, we are in changing times. There is not a bottomless pit of money, and it would be wrong of us uh, as a party of government to say that things won't have to change. And I understand that things uh, will have to change. There does have to be a rationalisation and a looking at the entire estate. But that does not mean uh, I'm an advocate of them closing. It means I'm an advocate of the EA actually sitting down and telling us 
the, the, the facts and the truths around uh, if, if centres are to close, is there the capacity within the ones that remain open to actually deal with uh, the numbers of young people uh, that will be going to them? I also uh, think the EA have been slightly uh, disingenuous uh, with their comments. Um, I'm conscious of my time. Um, I think they've been disingenuous around their 1.3 million because they have actually said that it will be invested back into peripatetics. And I would just question that. So I think the EA have a lot of questions to answer. Uh, I believe that we have all representatives on the EA board, and it would be vitally important that the political representatives on the EA board actually question the EA on their rationale for bringing this uh, consultation forward. And I would say to everyone in this House, make your comments known to the Minister and make them known to the EA, because it's the EA that I believe have serious uh, questions to answer in all of this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I call Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And at a recent adjournment debate, I joked after two North Down adjournment debates with the South Down Minister for Infrastructure and attends that he'd done more than anyone else to dissolve the border between North and South Down. And, and I fear if, if the EA proposals are implemented by the minister, he will do more than anyone else to reinstate it. So um, I, I know he's paying attention to this debate, and I know he's, he's not a man who wants to see a hard border. Um, so, so, so hopefully he won't go down that line. And I think it's, it's clear from, the, you know, adjournment debates are often constituency based and um, you know, a cursory glance, this would have looked like a South Down debate. But I think we can see by the fact that we've got three of the Belfast constituencies represented today. I see North Antrim of Lagan Valley, Strangford. I'll not list them all as well as our own constituency in North Down, Uri, of course. Um, that the, the, these centres serve a wide catchment area. And when we do come to the question of why there is uh, such maybe as, as being deemed by the EA an over provision in South Down. I think the, it's clear that by the numbers here today that, that many from across Northern Ireland access these centres well beyond the, the borders of South Down. And indeed, as, as has been made, uh, the point has been made by others. Um, South Down has a lot to add, uh, offer in terms of our natural environment and access to outdoor facilities, um, and it's right that, that the provision be there. Um, uh, Minister, in, 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 in terms of, of some of what's debated, um, there, there is a talk throughout the EA document in terms of the voluntary provisions there. And I suppose the question I, I would put if we were to go down this road, and I'm hopeful from the number of uh, uh, representations from your own party that, 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 that you are minded to go a different route. Um, but, but were we to take that route and, and put our reliance on the voluntary sector, what guarantee is there uh, of sustainability for those centres um, and, and, and what will his department be doing to ensure that sustainability so that um, those alternatives are, are there? Um, it was, uh, I think there's a real sense of connection as well to these places, that, that the history that goes, and that in itself is not sufficient a reason to keep it open, but what I would say is it is a sufficient reason to, to look twice at these proposals, because it was, as it was put to me by one teacher, um, uh, you know, this, 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 will, um, this will impact on my children personally, um, because the Bangor Central uh, use Arden Abanon. Um, every year, and I would put it to the, the, the minister, it um, will affect many of our constituents uh, directly. Um, and there, there will be an annoyance. There is an attachment to these centres um, if, if they are to close without um, good reason for doing so. The, the, the final point I would like to make um, is around the, 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 the consultation, and much has been made of it, and it, it, there is a real feeling that it hasn't been a genuine consultation. And, and I don't know if the EA were trying to be an innovative in using SurveyMonkey, looking modern, look, we're, we're using new technology and new ways of engagement. And, and they shouldn't be knocked if that's what they were trying to do so. But um, there's certainly a feeling out there that the, the SurveyMonkey produced very much directed people um, towards the answers they wanted to receive, rather than being sufficiently open to the, the answers that people wanted to give. 
Thank you very much indeed. I call uh, Mr. Chris Hazard. Mr. Hazard, you have up to four minutes. Um, and I thank you know, again. Apologies, I, I, we were in budget discussions there, so it's very timely, I suppose, given the, the, the subject matter. But uh, I did miss the earlier contributions. But I think it's certainly t testament. Um, for, the, uh, for the issue that we're discussing here today, the number of people, I, I don't think, I've been here for five years, I don't think I've ever seen a German debate uh, with so many people at it, so um, fair play to Colin uh, and indeed for everybody else for, for being here. Uh, you know, I think when we, when we look at the small sum of money uh, that is being talked about here uh, and the money that government ministers such as the Education Minister and myself and others will obviously have to um, look towards saving, I think this is something that, that should be borne in mind is the outcome uh, that these centres um, give, not just to our children, but indeed to the local economy. Uh, you know, if you take Cologne, Arnabannon and Delamont, th th these centres are vital, and no doubt this is a point that has been touched upon. These centres, the staff, they are very much part uh, of the local community, part of the learning process, I think. When, when you take an area like South Down, when you take areas such as the Moorns, uh, Kilbrony, Carnick for Lock, and the environmental learning and heritage that so many of our young people and kids coming out from Belfast, we see it all the time. Increasingly, this is their, their bed of learning when it comes to outdoor living, outdoor learning. Uh, and I think it would, it would be a travesty if we somehow couldn't uh, re-engage with the consultation uh, and speak to these centres uh, and find an appropriate way forward that I think matches the, the needs and the outcomes uh, that the department. Um, I think it is for uh, the department and for the minister to, to take the decision on this. Um, I know last year, whenever there was some issue regarding special educational needs in the Education Authority, John O'Dowd, the previous minister, stepped in. Uh, I think it's time uh, that we maybe do this uh, when it comes to this. Uh, and again, just finally, because I know I am time bound, but you know, consultation, as the last speaker says, is important. We look at different ways to consult. But it's important that we don't then take away from the consultation process. And I fear like this, maybe like the Social Security offices is also going under review as well. We have maybe taken away something when it comes to the consultation processes. So I'd ask the Minister to maybe re-engage on that. Thank you. I call uh, the Minister of Education, Mr Peter Weir. Uh, Minister, you have up to ten minutes. Okay. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I thank all members for who have contributed to this debate. It's undoubtedly, I think, as maybe the last speaker indicated, that uh, quite often in terms of the German debates, it's very specifically constituency focused. It is clear, obviously, this is an issue which goes well beyond uh, a single constituency. It is also clear that uh, there is a level of interest in this, this subject, a level of passion, and indeed it's commendable that, that so many people have been in the public gallery today and others to, to see the outcome of this. Uh, and can I say from the outset, I don't think anybody demures from the fact that there is a tremendous asset in terms of what is happening in young people's lives, uh, both in terms of general youth provision, uh, and it should be noted, I think um, Chris Little made reference to the, the fact that the natural inclination is for all of us to think immediately when we think of education purely of schools, but there is actually an important uh, aspect in terms of youth provision. And in terms of the youth budget, uh, there has been 34 million, for instance, spent this year in the, the youth budget directly in terms of revenue, and in terms of capital expenditure, much of it to actually improve youth facilities of about £9 million in terms of uh, youth facilities. And can I also say, yes, undoubtedly, there is a major advantage to the individual children's lives with the provision that are made by a range of, of youth centres. No one, I believe, is doubting that. But this is, I think, where we run into some levels of, of difficulties with this, and I'll highlight. First of all, indications in terms of where we are. This did originally arise from a, an overall assessment of what is needed and indeed what can be maintained in terms of youth services. And I think from that point of view, significant while uh, what we're hearing today is we do need to recognise and put this within a context that we did have five boards originally making their own uh, provision in terms of outdoor education centres. That is now uh, focused in into one board, and if you were starting off from scratch, you would not have the probably the layout and provision that you would have at present. Now, we are in a situation that at the moment there are 11 uh, that are statutory outdoor education um, centre provisions. There's another four that are voluntary, and I, and I would say in terms of the long-term future of those, a number of those have been mentioned, like Mr. Humphrey, for instance, in terms of places like Lorne um, or Galloway, are 
facilities that have been there for decades, so they, they are not going to be something which is under a particular degree of pressure or threat. And there is an issue about trying to ensure that we have a match between um, what is provided and what is needed. And I think undoubtedly there will be major implications if, if the proposals go through on that basis. Again, I would indicate that this is uh, a proposal, indeed a draft consultation by the Education Authority, and the people who will make the decision in this are the Education Authority Board. That is not the officials. The officials may have a particular view on this, but the board to which at least four parties in this, in this assembly are directly represented, as well as different sectors. Mention has been made, and I, I don't want to mislead people in, in relation to this. I believe there is an issue, as with almost anything in education at the moment, is an issue of funding. Now, I, I know, for instance, Mr. Hazard made reference, and he, he talked about it in the previous um, year, that when the previous education minister intervened uh, on that, and I think that was something that was very welcome. We do need to actually, and you know, I'm not going to pretend that there isn't a financial aspect to this. Because whenever the Ministry made the intervention, subsequent to then, I'm now in a position that this year's budget, and I'm not talking about in real terms, sometimes that is something bandied about, but in actual terms is £52 million down on what it was previously. It is in a situation in which the pressures this year are probably somewhere in the region of about £100 million in this year's budget. And some of that, I have to say as well, is through circumstances which have simply been not just in terms of the block grant, but imposed in Northern Ireland, where we see changes by the Chancellor in terms of national insurance and superannuation. That is something hitting everybody on that basis. It is making a, a fortune of a difference. So the room for the manoeuvre that I have, or the Education Authority has, is not as wide as it was previously. There's no doubt. And from that point of view, I'll give, I'll give, way, I'll give way in a moment. I'll give way in a moment. And from that point of view, while we do not know the budget for 1718, uh, it is no doubt that we're going to be in very trying circumstances in terms of 1718, uh, where unless there's a very radical shift in terms of the budget across the, the executive, there will be very major problems for education. I'll give way to the, the member. Later. I thank the minister for, for giving way. And I do understand the difficulty in terms of budgets, as we all do. But would you agree with me in times of austerity, in times where we have serious obesity crisis, where an executive is working together to try and bring about changes, and in times where we want to deal with uh, underachievement, that it is especially important we find a 1.3 million, especially given the huge budget that the Minister has. I know I was in your position. I know the amount of money that's in the education budget. Yes. It's a matter of public record what is, was in that. But if we're dealing with a situation that effectively I start the equivalent of £150 million down and trying to find that, the only way that can be done is by way of a range of, of change in cuts. There will be pressures on next year's... No, I, I need to... I've only got 10 months. I need to make a degree of... Um, I, I'm sure there will be... Uh, a very important contribution Mr McGrath has, has made already on it, but I want to be able to deal with, uh, with the issue in, in relation to that. There will be undoubtedly be very major pressures in terms of 1718. That will particularly bear on the Education Authority, because obviously we want to try and protect as much direct frontline school budget. And can I say in terms of that, I think unless there's a very radical change, there will be other cuts that will have to be made which are more painful, which are more politically difficult for this House that will be made even in the, the outdoor education centres. And from my point, I'll give way briefly then, just if you can. Because I am concerned that the, the, the debate has completely turned. We're now talking about finance. The terms of reference of the Education Authority was never made any reference to finance. And, and now we, we're basically, are the ter we had serious questions about the actual review, but now we're questioning, are the terms of reference of the review changing in front of our very eyes. I'm being, I'm being absolutely honest with the House. Finance is critical to education. Finance will be critical to this debate as well, because there will be, have to be cuts that will be made by the Education Authority, because I have no alternative other than to stay within budget. The Education Authority has no uh, alternative other than to stay in budget. And I am not going to pretend that there is not a pressure out there in terms of finance where money will have to be found. And well, with respect, respect on it, I'm trying to answer, and I'm being honest, I'm not going to pretend that there will be some, while there is work that will be done by the Education Authority in trying to ensure that they have the best possible facilities for people, that finance is not an important aspect of this. I think it would be misleading to the House to pretend otherwise. Now, in terms of where we are, and again, I reiterate, I suspect that we will be faced in 1718 
unless there is a very radical change in terms of the budget. And to be fair to the Finance Minister, he does not have a great deal of room for manoeuvre, either given sort of the, the block grant, that there will be more painful decisions that this, this House will be faced with. You know, so I do not want to lead, mislead anybody in, in relation to that. What I would say is that in terms of, and members have made, is this the right choice? Is this a choice in which have things been got right in the consultation? Having spoken at times to members of the Education Authority, I do not believe that they are in a particular doctrinaire position that this is some sort of uh, panacea or indeed should be a, a plan which is set in stone. We are talking about proposals which ultimately will be decided upon by the Education Authority Board. What I would say in tackling that, and this is where I would urge people in this House, in the consultation as well, that if... Order. Sorry. Can I ask members to show respect to the Minister okay. who is addressing the House? What I would say is that if members are looking for uh, a, an alternative route, I think it is incumbent on those to put forward a strong alternative, but commensurate with what we are, where we are in terms of finance, because I do not think people are hung up on a particular solution. What they are hung up on is trying to ensure that the budget of the Education Authority is used in the best possible fashion. And there may well be other things that the Education Authority will have to do, which will be more difficult than even this in that regard. So I would urge members, if they are looking at what the provision, for instance, in terms of outdoor uh, education centres, to look at what the overall proposal should be, to look at alternatives, to provide those alternatives. And I think that they will find, if they, if they produce alternatives, uh, which are able to provide uh, a strong level of support in terms of outdoor centres, but can match it much more within the budgets that will be available to the Education Authority. I do not think anybody is going to be objectionable to that. But if we simply say people will not make the best use of a consultation if simply they say, no, we oppose all cuts, and that is where I think there is going to be a maturity in the, in the debate. So I the decision ultimately will be taken by the Education Authority Board. I think they are open to hear what is, what is being said by others, and I urge people to take part in the consultation. Whatever doubts they have on it, put forward their proposals. If, it, if indeed it is not to be confined by a survey monkey or anything of that nature, to put forward that directly, to speak directly to Education Board Authority members, and to come up, I think, with an alternative which is workable and financeable. Order. That completes the debate. The Assembly is adjourned.